Well, I would love to hear more. Yeah. About like your unique background, you know, with the counseling and everything. And then your business that you started is, is what is it? Real, realize. Realize. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then like your travels, like whatever you think is cool to share. I'd love to just hear a little bit about that. And then we can kind of like dive into how that relates to the limbic system and to healing or where you see healing needed the most in your work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this started as like a personal journey. You know, I was like a really, um, troubled teenager and I, you know, went through the, the struggles that any teenager went through, but it really escalated into like, um, and, using drugs and just this really crazy chaotic lifestyle and I had nowhere to turn and nobody knew what was happening to me and no one could help um so when I finally like got to a place of stability for myself at 20 years old um I really started on the search for what is going to help me um to keep healing so for that, it was going to school and like learning and educating myself and, you know, going through grad school, you have to like delve deep and understand the family systems and what are the the traits that have been passed down and what am I holding on to myself? And I went to a school for um, uh, art therapy. And so the art therapy allowed the the other practices to come into play that I could tap into my body and then tapping into my body led to more emotions coming out right and understanding myself at a deeper level and so as I continued to work with people I started to see these trends where people are just disconnected from their bodies in general and when we get severed from our our body we get severed from our spirit we're just in this you know, cognitive state where it's the the racing thoughts and, you know, sleepless nights and the physical illnesses that come from that, right? Because we're just pumping cortisol into our body all the time. And so I decided to get certified as a yoga instructor, not because I wanted to teach yoga, but because I wanted to do some yoga in my therapy practice. And so I started to teach people how to integrate their body with their mind and it really became like a spiritual journey I see the healing process as this more existential way of finding ourselves and like what we're supposed to do in the world um rather than just like getting over symptoms you know because I don't think the short-term way of of handling mental health really works um and I feel like for me, I needed a deeper dive to cleanse not only myself, but like my family trauma um, that had been inherited into my body. And then I started to see all of these patterns with people that I was working with, especially young girls that mimicked things that I had gone through. And so I asked these deeper questions of why why are teenagers suffering? Where is this um, like deep depression coming from? Is it a cultural thing? Is it just their family system? And then I started looking into this intergenerational aspect, you know, and the genetic component of that and how our cells can change as, um, as the generations are passed down people inherit certain things but then we also have the option of healing ourselves and healing ourselves and our brain and the neuroplasticity like we can have power and control over that right we just think that our genetics are like a life sentence and like oh I have anxiety oh I have depression and it's this self-defeating kind of learned helplessness that I see people being programmed to feel in our society because that's the way our mental health industry is telling us to feel um or how to handle it like you have clinical depression and that's just the way it is and you take this and for the rest of your life because you have this deficiency in your body and it's like well we do have the power to um shift our body in a different way that can restore and it's not just in this deficit kind of 
mentality all the time. So I started to explore what that would look like. And it led to doing my PhD in intergenerational trauma. And it's the coolest thing I've ever heard. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, historical trauma and multi macro cultural factors and influences in young people. So I didn't want to leave out any part that could be influencing what a young person might be experiencing. I wanted to look at every aspect and it took a super long time <laughs> and a lot of reading. Um, but it was, it really came to a point where you can't leave anything out. Um, but it's also not this like absolute truth where this is who we are and that's it. It's like, oh, if we change these systems, if we start, like if these systems can be changed that influence family structures, then family structures can influence young people in a different way. So with that information, sorry, this is a long explanation, but I'm, I'm almost done. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> with that information and through traveling with my partner who has traveled the world, um, he cycles long distance across the world and so he he stays with different families along the way and he had a much more open way of traveling than I had in the past I was also a traveler but not as as open as that but with him we've been able to just experience families taking us in you know through our travels and experiencing different cultures and this aspect of like family and community and um, so experiencing the, the travels and understanding and learning what we don't have in our communities and systems here in the U.S., um, we started to create the nonprofit, the Realized Truth, because it's like realizing our true selves, right? How do we re realize our true selves? It's by healing ourselves with other people. And so this community aspect of bringing people together and trying to and heal ourselves in a natural way is it going for a walk together is it talking about our feelings is it doing some stretching is it doing some deep breathing so that we reconnect to our vagal nerve you know and, and just like center ourselves um and we've been able to see people transform and it's like wow this really works you know so that's that's pretty much the long version. <laughs> no, I think it's amazing. Thank you for sharing all of that. And what I love about it is, and this is why I wanted to have the, these conversations with other healers is the more that you dive into it, the more you realize that it's all the same, you know, and like what you're talking about on like a Jungian or depth psychology level and a world travel level and in intergenerational trauma also layers right into what you would consider like internal family systems or what you would consider like with acceptance and commitment therapy. Like you can look at that as a very basic living a values driven life, which is evidence-based and in a little workbook you can work on. And I love using that model, like in my therapy practice where it's all evidence-based, but then when you start to look at like traveling the world and looking at the energetics and the spirituality of things, you realize there's a deeper soul purpose and you can get really deep into the spiritual context and the historical context of what that means. It doesn't have to be evidence-based written down in a workbook somewhere, you know, you can go deeper. And, and then even what you said of just seeing sense of community, it feels right. It feels like you can see how these other cultures live and say their sense of community and support that they have you know, obviously it's working better than what we have here. And that's why the West has so many of these chronic illnesses and chronic diseases. And like you said, an existential crisis of, of the young people and of all of us really with chronic stress illness. And so it makes sense, like a visceral reaction that you feel. But then when you look at polyvagal theory and you see, you know, ventral vagal and social connection and social engagement is the ultimate way where you can actually co-regulate that that is the ideal state of our nervous system. Then you put the science on it and you're like, well, the stuff that people have been saying for years and being told, oh, that's woo-woo or you don't know that, that's not evidence-based, but now it is. And I think we're starting to see these layers or with epigenetics of trauma, you know, and it's very obvious that for so many years, some people have been like, yeah, like I think my family's cursed, 
you know, like we all have this problem with the same illness, or we all have this problem with the same bad patterns with relationships. And the genetics came in a little, but then they did that research, right, on um, families that are generations down of uh, civil war, prisoners of war. And you can still see that, white, right, like five or six or seven generations down. So we know now that it is science-based, that there kind of is a, a genetic generational curse, so to speak, but that it can be changed because then we can change our genetics with mm -hmm. what we do and how we live and how we relate to others. Um, so I think it's so interesting to to tie in that what the holistic practitioners have known for years does have science coming up and backing it. It's just that it took a while to catch up. And I still think we're leading like these parallel lives. And I want to be like, no, 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 meet in the middle. Like, they're yes. all the same thing. We just have different words for them because we've been on different trajectories, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, we're like destigmatizing this like woo-woo kind of culture because practitioners are understanding that this needs to be integrated into the mainstream. Like, I think there is, and I think that was like a part, it is a part of our mission for the nonprofit. Um, you know, we don't want to just like separate this, like, oh, this is our healing kind of culture over here. It's like part of our mission is to integrate into systems that are not working, you know, um, or working to some degree and just need some support in other avenues. Um, so we're, we've actually like recently built a holistic team and we're starting to like go into institutions with these holistic practices, right? And the the other aspect of it is, is just like bringing a group of people as the community and forming a, commu a little community where other people can feel that um, and have those healing circles where we share about what's happening with us and, and experience um other people going through things so we don't feel alone you know I I have I started doing sound healing um with the you know with singing bowls I got trained we got trained in it and then I used it in my private practice you know individually and I saw how people can just energetically release things so much quicker than through the talk therapy right so I got to witness that for myself and then with other people and also on a scientific level it's I know it's bilateral stimulation of both hemispheres in the brain because I'm doing trauma reprocessing people are talking about their trauma while I'm activating the other hemisphere in their brain that controls the subconscious mind right with the sound healing so that it has access to heal the whole self instead of being in protection mode on one side and, and not being able to access everything, you know? So that's why people get so stuck in talk therapy and never move, move up. I'm sure you see it all the time. Um, but then when I made that shift, it was like, whoa, people started to, to get better much quicker. And so it was a perfect example of, of the science and the sort of energetic world combining um so hopefully we can do that on on a systemic level you said too it, it it parallels over so well to our limbic system which is like maslow's hierarchy of needs right our basic needs for most of our population are at real risk right now you know just seeing the price of food going up and just seeing that you know our our ecosystems being destroyed and, and seeing the health crisis we have so our basic needs are under assault from all sides. It's not just the people that that are struggling with chronic illness or chronic pain or the people that are that we would consider, oh, it's a minority. It's the majority of people right now are struggling on some way with a mm -hmm. real threat, at least, to their way of living. And so what does that do to the limbic system? Of course, we're all trending towards, if not in, fight or flight mode. And the whole premise of limbic system healing to heal chronic illness and pain is we need to be more living in the parasympathetic and the social engagement realm. But how how are any of us really doing that if, yeah. if all of us are feeling a very real sense of danger and scarcity and fear, and even just like the social division that's around us right now, let alone the resource scarcity that we have. So it, it goes deeper. And I think that's why we do have to go deeper than relying on 
you know, what the science says or what the evidence-based practices says or the, or the specialists, because I think the answer is more of a return to the old ways and finding your inner wisdom and seeing what are other cultures doing different that's working and why is it working? Because really it's, it's an assault on our nervous system every day to be living in like the westernized world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't want to victimize us or like make us sound like we are the only ones suffering. Right. Cause I have also seen, you know, when we were in Mexico, we witnessed how the Coca-Cola company had come in and bought all of they're hoarding all of the water so that the local people have to um, purchase water or they have to purchase Coca-Cola, which is sold cheaper than their own water, you know? So it's, it's definitely happening all over the world, but I just want to like break this illusion that like we are free and like we are, you know? Um, and there was another point that I, I, oh, I, recently went to a holistic medical center in Providence called the biomed center. And I met with them and I had a meeting and they were, we were talking about how I work with so many young people that are so dysregulated and have such severe clinical depression and anxiety. Right. And like, what is that really about? What are the root causes of that? Instead of just like treating the symptoms that the biomedical model does. And we were talking about, you know, how a lot of times because we're in this fight or flight system, especially during the pandemic, right, that they were activating the cortisol levels to like such high degrees that the stress hormones were just pumping so much. And it has kind of burnt out the hormonal systems in young people. And they're noticing that it's not a serotonin issue. Like that's why the antidepressants aren't working. They're treatment resistant, right? It's actually a hormonal imbalance now because the fight or flight has been at such a chronic distress, you know, the, the rate has just exacerbated what the body can keep up with. Um, because we're living in that fast pace, work as hard as you can, you know, get as much done, be perfect, keep going. Even if it's, it's, there's no like slowing down. There's no attuning to the body. There's no restoration. Um, and I thought it was really interesting that like, we're approaching some of the stuff totally wrong. And I was hearing it from other medical professionals. It wasn't, it wasn't just my intuition, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And I love that too, because I think that's, again, what we're noticing is there are some MDs that are like actually seeing it and they're calling it out. And it's like, wow, like for the first time in a really long time. So again, some of the science and progress, I don't want to demonize it because it's really interesting to hear, you know, that like it is catching up with what we've always known can also include Western medicine, but it's the idea of we don't look at depression and say, narrow it down to one neurotransmitter and throw a drug at that, that we think, but we're not really sure is going to target that one neurotransmitter and then wonder why it doesn't work. Like even the Western medicine now is saying, well, if you think about it, chronic stress is now impacting hormones, which is impacting limbic system, which is impacting all of your neurotransmitters and your enteric nervous system and your gut health. Why don't we take a holistic approach? And even if their approach maybe relies on like artificial probiotics and other artificial chemicals and hormones, we can still take that into a holistic perspective. But we now know that the science is catching up and understanding what we've known to be true. So I think it can go both ways. It can go in a positive way, but we also need to be cautious of where are they going to take that, you know, in in science? Are they now just going to throw children on all of these, you know, artificial things to try to balance it rather than saying, actually just close down the public schools, put them out in nature, get them some sunlight, get rid of their social media. Hey, magically one year later, they're all cured. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm just thinking about like coming back to more Eastern herbal supplements, you know, as like preventative medicine instead of this reactionary medicine that we're caught into right now. 
adaptogens, you know, just all of these wonderful herbs that exist to support us. And yeah, and I would love, I would love if we could talk again. I know our time is almost up, but I would love to hear about what you do with the cacao communities and everything. Maybe we could have like a part two conversation if you're open to it. Um, but I wanted to have a few minutes if you want to share some of the work you do and where people can find you. And then I can put some links, you know, in the description with, with your, your group, your practice, all the events that you're doing, if you want to share them. So we just started um, really last summer about how we can get communities together, get people together to do just like fun things, um, emotional things, you know, um, integrating our body kind of things. And uh, the link would be www.realreyestruth.org and we post things in events and offerings that we do every season um, we have a healing circle that we do every week we go on nature walks every week you know as a community um, we do cacao gatherings once a month for like a deeper dive and our holistic team is um, hoping to develop these workshops that are more specific to maybe certain topics like woman and body image issues, like things in our culture that like are not um, not like talked about on a community level. And so giving space for those things. Um, but we're, you know, we're hoping to just keep expanding and and help us you know or or just like be available for as many people so that people can heal themselves you know where that's all it is we're providing therapeutic spaces and people can take what they want from that so yeah please like come by if you're ever in Massachusetts <laughs> I love it I love it and do you have any like online offerings sometimes like anything like that that people that aren't like local might be able to take advantage of or we, we don't I really will I would like to have like, um, like a historical trauma kind of dialogue about how it's integrating into our families online. That's something that I've had in the back of my mind that will probably happen at some point, you know, awesome. we'll keep an eye out for it. That sounds really great just to have like an open forum of that kind of stuff or some ideas on how to integrate it too. So yeah. thank you for, you know, having me here and like keep doing the work you're doing and spreading this word like it's so nice to talk to another you know person professional holistic kind of men mentality person um thank well, you thank you no thank you so much for showing up and not knowing what you were getting yourself into and just being open to it <laughs> that's been my life basically and it I always know. works out <laughs> it always works out yes awesome oh I love it I'm so glad that that we were able to connect and and just like the world works and like brings people together which is awesome but no, thank you so much. And I'm so happy.